God talks about how we are to go in as we go in to possess our land, we are to drive out the enemy. Well, driving out the enemy takes effort. Driving out the enemy is from, you have to fight and be willing to fight. And you will take a few blows, but trust me, you'll give a whole lot more than you get. It's called winning the war, even if you lose a few battles. Don't worry about the little losses. Just know that you're on the winning side and God's winning for you. The battle is the Lord's. You're just to front the battle. Now, the land is already promised to you. God already gave you your inheritance. Your whole life you will spend battling to get it and keep it. You hear me? Don't accept. I call it an unreasonable facsimile. Don't accept the devil's lies and tricks and his displacement. Don't allow the devil to displace you, to displace your inheritance out of your hands. Don't allow him to do that. You displace the devil. You displace those demons. You move them off the beaten path. You move them off their purpose. Don't let them move you off yours. Don't allow it. The other thing the Lord gave me to say to you is, and it's going to sound gross, but this is what I got. Spit in the devil's eye. Tell him where to go. Put him in his place. Don't let him displace you. What God has for you is for you. It's not for the devil. It's not for, the, for his taking. He can't come in for the taking. It's not his. He's trespassing. This is yours. You own your inheritance that God gave you. That's part of your covenant with God. Your inheritance. Your inheritance includes love. Joy, peace, power, authority, mm. excellent health, prosperity, wholeness, mental, emotional, physical wholeness, freedom, satisfaction, fulfillment. Oh, the list goes on at infinitum when it comes to the goodness of God and what he has promised us in our lives. But you must not allow the devil to displace you of your inheritance. Don't allow it. Don't allow it. Please don't do that. It's not his for the taking. It's yours for the keeping. So what you ought to do is drive out the enemy. You notice that he said, don't even accept the gold that, that, that is in the enemy's camp. Don't accept it. It's a cursed thing. Don't, don't tolerate anything from the enemy. As you go in to possess your land, don't tolerate things like your tendency to want to cuss somebody out, your tendency to want to tell somebody off, your tendency to be vengeful. Don't give in to your tendency to want to be spiteful, your tendency to want to lie, your tendency to want to cheat, your tendency to be jealous of your other brothers and sisters' inheritance. Don't be jealous of them. Help them get their inheritance. Don't fight against them. You're not in competition. You're on the same side, You're on the same team. Now, what you need to do is ask God to help you know warfare strategies. Ask God to help you take authority teach you how to spit in the devil's eye and it really gets in his eye. Teach you how to aim. Teach you how to move the devil off, off, off balance. How to rob him of his power as he tries to rob you of your inheritance. You rob him of his power. You don't allow it. No, I ain't having it. No, 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 no. You get off my ground. Get off my turf. This is my domain. God gave this to me. How dare you try to move in on my turf? No, 
This body belongs to God. In the name of Jesus, Irene's body belongs to God. And you will not have it, Satan. You will not take the health God gave her. We rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. And if you're wondering who Irene is, she's a mother of one of our church members, and we're taking authority. She's in the hospital right now. We're not having it. So what I want you to know is when you are going through things in your life, things will challenge you. Things challenge all of our attitudes. Just like Andrea was talking about. I battle the attitude. We all have to go through that. It's how we choose to do it. Now, we're not always going to do it perfectly. We know that because we're born in sin and shaping in iniquity. But even though we're born in sin doesn't mean we must live in sin. So no matter where we slip and slide, no matter where we trip, when we trip over our own feet, even if Satan is able to get a trip or two on us and we fall, dust yourself off, Get your forgiveness, get back up, and, and get your heels to clicking. Keep on keeping on. Don't sit there and wallow in it. Don't sit there in condemnation. Don't sit there in guilt, shame, none of that. There's no shame in God's game, baby. You're in God, there's no room for shame. There's no room for it. I don't care how much of a failure you may think you are. There's no room. Know that whatever God has for you, it is for you, not for the devil. You do not lay down and let the devil rape your in inheritance. He will not rape you, no. He will not sodomize your dignity. He will not malign your name. If I use that correctly, I don't know. Forgive me if I didn't. Don't let him slander you. Don't let him tell lies on you. Don't let his words flow out of your mouth. Hmm. Do you hear me? Like Rashad said, he's learning not to put himself down, not to say negative things. I have to watch it. I find myself saying, I can't afford. And that's a lie from the pit. Because God is my provision. He said in his word to widows, he is their husband. So if he's my husband, he, he will provide. He'll provide for all of his children. That's his promise, part of his covenant. And I got convicted this week. I have to learn to stop saying that. Rashad didn't know he was stepping all over my toes. I was like, okay, oh, 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 okay, Lord, I hear you. I got to stop saying those words. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. God will withhold no good thing from those that love him. And if I want something and it's good, he's going to give it to me. I don't have to have the money. He's got the means. And that's all that counts. So I have to learn to watch my mouth too. I have to learn what comes out of my mouth. And I thank God for the conversations we have all had this week, because I've been learning as see a lot of times as the body of Christ, we think, you know, we look to a leader and think, okay, feed me, feed me, feed me, teach me, teach me, teach me. Okay. But I'm listening to you guys and you guys are feeding me and teaching me. And I thank you for that. I thank you for how you open up and how you share. I'm not going to get emotional because I'm learning from you as well. I'm learning through our conversations. You guys say things and you're talking about yourself. You have no idea you're talking about me too. I'm like, wow, I've been weak in that area. And I have not even realized how I've been given place to the devil with my mouth. I'm just as guilty. Wow, sorry, Lord. I, it just didn't occur to me. So even when we're doing our best to do our best, we're still screwing up. 
Yours truly, guilty as charged. But the bottom line is, the thing I love about God is he knows the intent of the heart. He knows the motive of the heart. And he knows no matter where you're messing up, he knows where you mean to do well. And he will bless us a lot of times through his mercy based on the intent of our heart, not always the actions of, of us. So, but we must be careful not to give place to the devil, not to let him rob us of our inheritance, not any of it, not with our bodies, our money, our finances, our business, our affairs, our relationships, our lives, our ministries, our giftings and callings, our weaknesses, even our weaknesses belong to God. The Bible says what? This is part of our covenant. His strength is made perfect in our weakness of all things. His strength is made perfect in our weakness. 